Good morning, Real Life Church. Happy Easter to you. It is my absolute pleasure to talk to you this morning on Easter Sunday about the resurrection of Jesus. We are week two in our Waymaker series. So Stuart was up last week doing week one, which is Jesus is the way to the Father. And he talked about the cross. Um, it was brilliant. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, please hop online. You can listen on our YouTube channel or click on our website and the audio file is on there as well. Next week, Jeremy is up with Jesus is the way to heaven. I always want to sing that. He is the way to heaven. So Jesus is the way to heaven. And I'm up this week with Jesus is the way to life. So we're doing this as a whole church. So Real Life Kids and Youth are also running alongside us on the Waymaker series. So they are also looking at Jesus being the way to life. They're learning the signs. So let's see if I can get this right. So Jesus is my way maker. Hopefully, Matt, I've made you proud in that moment. So Jesus is my way maker. Um, and today it is Jesus is my way to life. So if you've got a Bible, please turn to Luke and we're in Luke 24. We're reading from verse one all the way through to verse 12. I've got it in the ESV here. So it says this, but on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed like an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter, gotta love Peter, haven't you? But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves and he went home marvelling at what had happened. Such a beautiful story. So I, I want to do two things this morning. I want to bring a little bit of theology. So I just want to make clear what the resurrection means for us. And then I want to bring a little bit of the prophetic over uh, the women listening and over the men listening. And I've got um, some things that I feel like God wants to say to you, to us as women. And I feel like God's got some things he wants to say to you as men. So if you fall into um, either one of those categories, um, if you are listening, um, then God's got something absolutely lovely he wants to say to you. So let me make this clear. The empty tomb says loudly that the father accepted Jesus's death in our place for all our sin. That Christ's blood shed on the cross was so full and so perfect the resurrection acts as proof of that. It was enough to satisfy the wrath of God. It was enough to break the curse of sin. The price of forgiveness was totally paid. And, and I want to say that again. The, the, the price of forgiveness was totally paid. No matter what it is you come to Jesus with, no matter what your life has looked like, no matter what it looks like now, the price was totally paid. There's not a penny missing that you need to contribute, that you need to put in. The righteousness of God was fully satisfied. We don't always love this. We don't always love that he's a judge. We don't always love that there's a holiness about God that must be satisfied, that blood must be spilled, that a price must be paid. But it was totally satisfied. 
in Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus was a public declaration that the cross was enough, that my way maker was enough. And at the cross, Jesus cried. If you remember, he cried, it's finished. And, and the temple curtain just tore into this, this very dramatic event. And at the cross, when he cried, it is finished, that was a statement. And the empty tomb for me is the father's way of saying it sure is. So when the son says on the cross, it's finished, and, and the women run to the tomb to see what's going on there, when Peter runs, the emptiness, the grave clothes that are by themselves, they say in a loud voice from the father, it sure is finished. At the cross, Jesus dealt with everything, dealt with all my sin, all my shame, took it all in front of the father. At the resurrection, the father was saying, I'm satisfied. You see, the cross loses all its power without the resurrection. You can't have one without the other. The cross isn't actually enough for me to be saved. It must be that the father's satisfied, that the father accepts the sacrifice, that the father then raises Christ back to life. The two go together. And that, that's the bit that I, I want us to grasp that this morning, that the resurrection is in one sense an example of God's power, but it is it is more than that. It is it is his way of saying the cross was enough. It's his way of saying um, the wrath of God, the, the justice of God, the, the holiness of God is all satisfied in Jesus because he died on the cross. I receive him, accept him and then raise him back to life. I feel like lately there is a, a gospel that, that kind of just, I don't know, edges a little bit away from this and, and communicates something more along the lines of you're amazing. And if you follow Jesus, you'll end up with this happy life. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think it I feel like today Jesus would invite us to step a little closer into the tomb, to actually look at what the gospel is, to look at what's on offer here. And what's on offer here is total forgiveness, is total freedom, is a right standing with God, is a right understanding of who we are in Christ, is, is all of those things. And there isn't, there's, there's not a promise of an easy, happy, pain-free life. There is a promise of a full life. There is a promise that you will be right with God. There is a promise of total forgiveness, of total freedom. There's one where, where you are right with God forever and you get to walk with God forever through everything, no, no matter what. The gospel that's on offer here is found on the empty cross and in the empty tomb. It's found in the total forgiveness, the, the wrath of God being satisfied. It's found in that place. And now I, I want to, I want to, now that we understand, now that we think, oh, I get that. I get that the resurrection was proof that Christ died in my place for all my sin. I get that the life that he's purchased for me is one of a full life, without a shadow of a doubt, a full life. But it's a full life spent living, following him, following in his ways, accepting what he's done in your place for all your wrong like it's, a, it's an access through him now we get that I, I want to speak to us personally I feel like God has something to say to the women listening so I'm going to ask you to really pull up a chair and, and lean your ear in but men you also need to listen to this you need to understand the things that God is saying to the women around you they were the first up the women. I, I want to say that. I want to underline that in the story. They were the first up. They were the first to see. They were the first to hear. They were the first to remember, the first to believe and the first to speak. Does that sound like any women you know? They were the first to see the empty tomb. They were the first to hear the angels say, he's not here, just like he said he wouldn't be here. He's risen. He's alive. I feel like in this moment, God wants to grab hold of some women and say to you, it's okay that you came first. 
It's okay that you saw first. It's okay that you believed first. I, I felt like when I was prepping this, God wanted to underline that. It's okay that you believed first. It's okay that you tell others. I feel like he is a way maker. That's, this whole series hangs on that. He makes a way for people where, where there's seemingly no way, but he also calls us into that. And as women, he calls us into making ways, making ways for people to meet Jesus, hear Jesus, find out about Jesus, encounter Jesus, using language to open it up, using creativity to open it up. There are so many women I know who are incredible way makers. They, they, they just seem to clear a path for people to see Jesus in their lives, in their creativity, in their words, in their workplaces, in, in their homes. That they, they just seem to, to make a way. I feel like on this Easter Sunday, God just wants to bring freedom to you. He wants to say it's OK that you were there first. It's OK that you hear it's okay that you speak, it's okay that you believe. I need you to understand that in the context of the New Testament, a woman's testimony was not valid in a court of law, was not seen as a, as a valid testimony of what had happened, was not, was not valid in most places, to be honest. Even the apostles, most of them were thinking, these, these women are a little unhinged and they've just told us a crazy story. Peter is the one who's up and out. The others are all debating it, saying, have they lost it? Have they lost the plot? Are they seeing things? Are they imagining things? It was into that culture and into that context that God chose to reveal his story first to the women. And I, I feel like something of that needs to just sit with us for a moment. You see, God, God, like gender to him doesn't matter like it matters to us culture and and what's socially appropriate doesn't matter to him like it matters to us what matters to him is that he finds hearts he finds way makers he finds men and women who are willing to hear him and do the things he's asked them to do he will look first at hearts always so if you have a heart that is listening to God, that is doing the things he says. If you are hearing stuff from him, if you are first up, first there, please speak up. Please make ways. I want to encourage you as women to keep getting up early. To not worry if you're the first one at your Bible, if you're the first one there. If you're the first one in the presence of God, to not be concerned what it might look like, what it might come across like, what it might seem like. You see, to God, all it seems like is your worshippers. And I'm telling you, on this Easter Sunday, what God loves most is worshippers. What he's after most is worshippers. What he wants is men and women who just love him, love his son, are full of the Holy Spirit. He, he just wants worshippers. So I want to encourage you to keep getting up early, keep getting your Bibles out, keep listening to God. There's something about remembering stuff. So they remembered what he told them. Just keep getting scriptures up, keep making things, keep writing things, keep carrying it around. Just keep on doing the things that you know make sense. Keep on telling stories, prophesy. Women, prophesy. Hear the word of God and speak it out. Speak it out on social media. I want to say to you women, make good use of every platform you have to speak. So social media is a platform. Make good use of it. Use your words for life. Bring light. Bring hope. Make ways. Don't, don't block it up for people. Don't put things in the way. Don't, don't make it hard or difficult for people to get to know God or follow God because of what you're posting. Open doors. Make it easy for people to see, actually, I know that you know and love Jesus. Make good use of all the gifting that God has placed into you and be less concerned by your gender. Be more concerned by your gifting. Be more concerned by being obedient to him. Be more concerned with opening up your mouths and telling incredible stories of what he is doing in the good times, in the hard times, in the bad times of what he's doing in your life to make a way. Men, 
I, I love Peter in this story. So on hearing the news, Peter rose up, ran. Don't worry, men. I'm not going to encourage you all to become runners, although, you know, if you want to, you should. He stooped to look into the tomb. He saw, he went home and he marvelled. You see, Peter had heard enough from the women to stir him to act. He'd heard enough. The others were still debating it. The others were still questioning it, reasoning. Peter had heard enough in their voices, enough in their tone to respond. He picked up on something from Mary. He'd gone, now there is something here. There's enough for me to get running. There's enough for me to be out the door. There's enough for me to get myself to the tomb. On Easter Sunday, I believe that God wants to say to you men, rise up. If you have heard enough, if you have heard enough of his story, enough from the women around you, enough from the, the, the front, enough, if you have heard enough of the message, get up, run, go to the place where his story is unfolding, go to the place where it's all happening, where it's all kicking off, where it's all, where it's all stirred up, where, where, where history is being made, go there and put yourself in the mix, put yourself in the place where Christ is at work, get yourself in the tomb, get, give it a good look around, investigate it, ask questions, but get yourself to the places where Jesus is, Get yourself into the places where he's telling his stories, where he is, is doing history, where get yourself to be a part of it. You see, Peter got up and Peter made himself a part of it. Peter was so influential in the early church, so influential when the Holy Spirit was poured out. I know that in the tomb something happened to Peter. Something happened to Peter where he realised, my saviour is not dead, he's alive. My saviour's no longer in the grave. He is up and walking around. The grave clothes are by themselves. There's no body in there. He's gone. He's alive. Everything he said, suddenly for Peter, it, it, it's all coming true. It's, it's, all, it's all accurate. It's all right. And then he gets to flourish and then he gets to function. Men, I'm, I'm asking you, rise up. I'm saying run. Get yourselves into the places where God is at work. Put yourself in the mix. For some of you, you've heard what God has got to say. For some of you, you know what God has called you to. But for some reason, you're still sat on the sofa in front of the TV. You're on your phone. You're hidden in your laptop. You are somewhere else. And I want to say to you, get to the tomb. I want to say to you, pick yourself up this morning and run. I want to say to you that, that what is found in the tomb are your answers. What is found in the place where Jesus has done like, like his best work are answers for you. That point of salvation, that place of forgiveness, that, that place of total freedom, of total power, of the wrath of God being fully satisfied, that place where he once was dead and now is alive, has got something for you. So I'd encourage you to really get yourself in the Easter story, get some worship on you. See, Peter, it says he went home and he marvelled. He went back to his place of influence and marvelled at what God has done. There are men out there that need to marvel. You need to marvel at the Christ. You need to marvel at what he's done. You need to sing, speak. You need to prophesy. You need to get the message out there because it is truly marvellous what he has done for you. Some of you are married to women or are surrounded by women who get there first, who speak first, who act first. And, and sometimes you sit back because you just think, well, like she's been there, she's done that, she's said it, I'll, I'll just let her carry on. I'll just let them carry on. And I feel like God would say, be like Peter, get up, get yourself to that place. She got there first because she was up early. That's not the end of the story. That's not all that God wants to tell. What he wants to do is pull in men and women and he wants to pull them into that place and see, say to them, see, that place where I was dead, I am not there anymore. I'm risen. I'm alive. And because that same power that raised me back to life exists now in you. 
is found in you, that total forgiveness, that total freedom, that total right standing with God. It is your access to the best life you could ever live. There will be suffering, there will be hardship, there will be pain. There will be all of that in the mix, in the offering, but you will live with Christ. You will live with his resurrecting power surging at work in you, propelling you forward. You will live with his stories. You will live with his way through stuff and you will help others find a way. So I want to encourage you, whether you're whether you're male or female, whether you whether you see yourself as a Peter or a Mary, whether you see yourself as, as one who is still in the house questioning stuff, I want to encourage you to get up. Go to the tomb. Go to the place where God did his best work. Marvel at the cross. Marvel at the empty tomb. Marvel at the Christ who was enough for God, therefore he is most definitely enough for me. Listen to the cry from the cross that says it's finished. Go to the empty tomb and hear the Father say it sure is. Listen to the angels who say he's not here anymore, he's alive. Watch Peter, watch Mary, be like them. This story is incredible, this story changes life. This story should change our lives it should change it at Easter but it should change it every single day Christ was enough the price he paid was enough I now get to walk into the life I always should have lived I get to walk into a life with him through it all no matter what and that is for me the best bit about Easter it's the best bit about the cross, it's the best bit about the empty tomb is I get to stand right with God and I get to walk into his wonderful presence and I get to live the best life now on the earth. It's not the easiest, not the happiest, it is by far the best filled with some of the most joyous moments you'll ever know. So I want to pray now I want to say to you that if you don't know Jesus as your personal saviour, you should. He loves you. The cross made a way for you to be right with God. The empty tomb has dealt with everything. You get to walk into the presence of the God who made you and loves you. In one respect, why would you say no to that ever? And if you already know him, keep on enjoying him. Keep on telling his stories Lord Jesus, we, we love you, we worship you, we thank you for the empty tomb, we thank you for the empty cross, we thank you that on the cross and in the grave you were enough, you were enough of a sacrifice to deal with the wrath of God, the right wrath of God against the sins of the world and you made a way us to be right with our father in heaven you made a way for us to live a full life now and you made a way for us to live forever to get to heaven your gift to us is amazing and we willingly accept it and we say thank you every day of my life I say thank you to you Jesus amen amen so I want to say, wash your hands, stay close to Jesus. If you hang on at the end of this video, there'll be the playlist, there'll be the sermon from last week, there'll be the stories, there'll be all the things that you need to make Sunday work. Happy Easter!